Hey guys, I love drafting, so here we go. Oh, that card, eh? I hear that's a good one. And I will just click it. I have not yet actually really looked at that, but <laughs> come on. It's a bomb mythic. I've heard about it even. Let's see. All right, right. Pretty damn good. They're not lucky. Upon quick inspection, oh, I was going to say it would be a stick to the color kind of thing, but uh, this is the best card by far. I'll have to take it, although I do absolutely love the Avon Squires. Okay, and so the pick is between the flunkies or this guy. This is actually playable. There's some other decent cards too. But... Oh, that thing again. I should really learn how to turn that off. I'm sure it's in settings somewhere. But it's funny that it asks me, or, or uh, I essentially tell it to stop saying that, and it does. Who knows, maybe I don't know how to click. Talking while I'm staring at this this choice here. Uh, let's go for this. Sometimes you can get caught up in the the first pick. It makes it seem like you should automatically be in that color when not necessarily. say one of these two. I'm gonna stick with the same thing. Even though this flyer is in fact yeah, you know what? <laughs> I changed my mind. I was gonna pick the flunkies, but this flyer is pretty good. Hmm. Some decent cards. Rats are obviously good. These guys are fine. This is fine as well. Not bad. Cleaver Riot is uh, one of those cards that wants to be good, but I don't think it is too good. It's playable, but anyways, arsonist for sure. It's fun. Um, the only drafts uh, that I'm 13 I've done have been on here, or rather I made videos. Um, so you guys could see exactly kind of <laughs> my learning curve for the set. It's really fun to kind of let it slowly absorb into your body and <laughs> learn the uh, <laughs> uh, ins and outs of a set by losing and winning with the cards. Oh, this little guy is so good. War Priest is great too, of course. This guy's just a little too specific. Eh? It's one of those picks that goes late, or will, I'm sure, just because of the fact that it is uh, basically best in a two color build. Oi, oi, oi. As I pass that green card, I see a amazing, or, or at least a very, very solid green. Uh, I'd say in some is second best, but um, I might have to pick this guy. Oh my. Oh my. This guy's. <laughs> or this guy's. Just removal. Can't go wrong. Uh, I'd say the best card is the cursor. Dragon Hatch thing is uh, alright. Clearly in mono red, it's amazing. That kind of thing. Cursor is the best card, I'd say, though. Some playables. Barely. I could have picked the uh, Kindled Fury there. It's 
Oh, I actually use the word playable again. If you have to. In M12, I didn't like it. Red, white. Uh, it might be the same reason I probably won't end up liking it that much overall in M13. Uh, red, white's just colors without basically card advantage is how it works. You can die out, kind of run out of gas, steam, whatever your machine's running on. Say the best card in the pack is the Essence Drain. Acidic Slime was really good too. Um, I'm a huge fan of that. Basically, though, I'm probably going to pass the Essence Drain for uh, one of these two. Anyways. Uh, this Knight's good. Solid. Kind of don't like picking white. For some reason, I have a feeling I'll get cut off it, but. Uh, the the Archangel carries a lot of weight, so I really should consider it. And I'm certainly picking white cards. It's almost a certainty now that I'll be white. see if I can go this whole event without making a mistake. Unlikely, but possible. It's a goal. I'm stating it now. That's the best card in the pack is the Sign in Blood. Essence Scatter is great too, of course. I stick to my colors. I'm still not committed to necessarily anyways to those colors, but it's looking quite Canadian so far. Well, I think I'm going to keep passing the uh, blue or black. And I kind of like these little goblins. You could make the safe bet with the land, perhaps, or Maybe it's not even a safe bet, but oh goodness me, I'm definitely passing blue and black. And this guy's great too. Safe passage is fine too. Pretty good in fact. But I'm um, just keep passing the blue. Now I have uh, this is typical where midway through pack two, uh, it's good to be committed to your colors, and I am. I have committed to red green here. Or, sorry, red white. where you could hate draft a card, even rare draft for five cents maybe, but you know, you could take one of these, but there's a very good chance I'll need this. It's kind of nice to be able to side in three enchantment removal spells, for example. I mean, that would only be in uh, certain exceptions, of course, but it is nice to have those uh, backup cards, as it were. Like really solid sideboard cards to go to. Hating on that card. I'm not sure how much graveyard stuff there is, if there's even any potential for the uh, Tormod script to be the pick. But I don't think I remember seeing anything really so far. Other than a 
rise from the grave or something. I've been passing this Blood Reckoning a lot, it seems, but it's a really good card. There we go, I got a Crypt. Let's see. Oh, there's no way on earth I can hate draft the best card here. Uh, if Gilded Lotus is still worth the vote two ticks, it's probably worth my picking. Uh, otherwise, this is probably the best card for me. If this was a top eight draft or something, it still might be the right pick. It is uh, worth trying to win, and my curve, in fact, kind of has a little stutter there in the middle, so I will pick that. I'm uh, really tempted to take the, <laughs> the uh, two tick rare there, for example. Well, I think this is pretty obvious to most everybody. Anybody can appreciate the Sarah Angel. We all see its beauty. Now. Arguably, maybe take the Divine Verdict or the Chandra's Fury, even. I, however, uh, already passed two ticks or so, so I'm going to take the obvious two tickets. Or the uh, automatic tickets, anyways. Well, this card's fine, great filler. Fire Elemental is good too. Rain of Blades is uh, pretty good as well. Kind of like this. Remember back in the day, of course, the Fire Elemental and the Earth Elemental. So close. <laughs> Which is better? I gotta say the Fire Elemental now. I'd say the best card is this, but, but uh, Chandra's Fury is actually really good. I like it a lot as well. It's a decent uh, finisher type. I have plenty of four drops already, but it still is. Griffin Protector is probably still the best card, so I will take it. Uh, hmm, passing more good blue and whatnot, but. I've got to take that. I hate to pass this. I'd say this is the best card in the pack, for sure. The elf. Scorpion's fine. But this is playable. Well, Thune appears to be a nice place. Assuming that's wha <laughs> why that ring is there. And it's not uh, out of its home homeland. It's not the ring of Thune in uh, some other fantastical place. One would assume the ring of Thune belongs in Thune. Ah, uh, yet another more rings. Uh, this is playable. Once again, my four drops are really heavy. Extremely heavy, but it's fine. Hmm. I've been passing a lot of good black. But that's how it is. Gotta pass good cards sometimes.
I don't like the Lions, but uh, I uh, don't have to play them. It's the kind of card I, I mean, I might side in against. It's a very specific deck. Uh huh. Tundra Wolves. Seems to be a decent uh, aggro build so far. Same uh, concept as last time, kind of just sticking to the curve and whatnot. Might not even play that, but anyways. Let's see here. Okay, what am I looking at? Is that uh, this card's fine, it's playable, but it's nothing to write home about. And the Mog Flunkies are fine too. Wild Guest is good. Um, for some reason, I'm not playing them. Maybe the uh, Jeremite. Let's do that. Flunkies is good enough in my deck for sure. Uh, that seems about right. Stare at my pool again here for a second. And see you guys in minutes. Alright, I've got half a glass of orange juice and I'm ready to roll. Looking back, this is another one of those drafts that uh, I'm sure I could have done better. Should have probably picked blue or something. But we're here now. Those things are obviously uh, fast and mono red, but. I figure the hatchlings are filler and two color. Maybe that's where all the red went. <laughs> I'm sure he wouldn't mind the dragging hatchlings. The blade tusk boar is. It's really solid. Obviously, it's uh, you know a little weaker against uh, <laughs> red decks.
excuse me. Oh my, what's this? Wait, wait. Huh. Hmm. Now I could get aggressive of course and attack with this goblin too it's just a matter of doing some simple math and seeing if it's uh, in the best interest let's see I've got seven going to him if he doesn't block it uh, I actually don't mind that uh, worst case they take three back from the boar but it's dealing him so much damage, there's a really good incentive for him to block one of these guys. So I kind of assume that's going to happen. Although he did attack me with the Phoenix. <laughs> there we go. Worked out. My apartment usually has the TV on. It's kind of nice to make these videos or commentaries with the videos rather than <laughs> not have a lot of noise going on.
could easily play this land, of course. But it's one of those things, it would almost take up a card slot. The fact that it's a card list is, I mean, it's not hard to play at all. You could easily just stick it in there, kind of thing. It's not amazing. Not as good as it is in Constructed, I'd say. But that's just me. Let's play 18 lands. I don't know why. I want to play it. It's a fun card. I like one drops and lands. Hmm. A uh, fervorful creature, if that's a word. Or does something just have fervor? I wonder. I almost want to kill it. But I will not. It doesn't seem like the best thing. Stuck on lands is never fun. Too many times, though, I felt sorry for an opponent being stuck on lands. You kind of let up your guard a little bit. As I've said before, it's not a good thing. Clearly. Hmm, oh, that's a shame. Expected, but a shame. Well, that's not a shame. If I'm lucky here, it looks like I can watch some TV or some 
YouTube documentaries. Turned on the sound effects, so I can just barely hear them in the background. Actually, kind of might as well turn them up a little bit. Every once in a while, I enjoy them. Oh, there we go. Let's say that could rip. Well, what do you know? I'm getting lucky. Six. I know all too well the F6. Stabilize. <laughs> Sometimes I like to save time, do things pre-combat. You can obviously just block the land for whatever reason, but I think generally it never makes sense. And because of the fact I'm not sure if there is anything that kicks a creature flying as an instant, 
I'm nice with that. Although, I'm sure there's reasons not to attack those ground guys, but until I know the format exactly, certain plays I might make, even when I do know the format exactly, certain stupid plays I might make. Let's try to get in with everybody. Seems like an obvious play to me. Now, this is another dilemma, classic dilemma. Whether you side in your enchantment removal for what appears to be just one enchantment so far. Pacifism is really solid, of course, but if that's all you see, it's hardly ever worth setting in, in a race like that, for example. Especially because I already have a little bit of enchantment removal. Uh, I could possibly set it in, but no, I won't. And the land, again, I could, I'm sure, over something. As you saw last time, it did fine. Um, has to take up a color slot, though, or another creature slot. Hmm. My hand is quite slow, of course. Uh, this is an instance where uh, you could easily mulligan it, but you might be looking at another two mana hand, of course. Um, almost likely so. Of course, you're hoping for the small end of your curve when you do mull like this, but uh, there's a few reasons why you might want to keep it. Drawing the small end of your curve again here and uh, I mean it depends how many or how much removal you have or how much tempo you can keep going on your side or time you can buy rather by keeping a really slow hand like this It's such a tough call, I think. Many would easily mull that, I'm sure. But I'm sure there's many like me who would at least like to think about it for a little while. It's good to, of course, think about what the opponent is playing, if he's slow or fast or whatever. And he mulliganed, or she, of course, but, um, and that's kind of relevant. It's hard to explain. Um, I mean, I'm not even sure about the theory myself, but it's, you know, you shouldn't really maybe change your moles on an opponent's, but I think people are more likely to get optimistic and keep optimistic hands if an opponent moles. But yeah, it's not, you probably shouldn't in fact come to think of it. <laughs> you shouldn't base your hand decision upon the opponent's. I mean, possibly. It does depend, of course, if they mole to four or something and you keep a hand that can maybe, you know, battle card advantage or whatever, wise, or something like that. Anyways, foolishly, perhaps, almost certainly foolishly. I hope for some two drops or lands, of course. <laughs> That'll do. No, I don't really deserve any lands ever again. And could easily lose to that. <laughs> oh my. Mm. On a pacifism. <laughs>
called Getting Lucky. was stupid, but that's how I roll. It's one of those things I should really count. <laughs> Take my time. I'll make another one of those promises not to at least try rather to be slop not to be sloppy. It's terrible. I cannot type. <laughs> Very nice person. <laughs> Very kind of him. At least this is an automatic mulligan. It's nice not to have to think about it. Sort of.
It's not looking good. sort of a useless attack. This is the point where you don't care if you're two for one. You essentially have to do it. Should have probably played one of those. Hmm. <laughs> Think about the death touch. Um, <laughs> not gonna send it. <laughs> Let's hope the game doesn't get to uh, turn seven. <laughs> it generally should. Well, it's not true, but by the time it gets there, hopefully the game's over in your favor. And a pause. Thank <laughs> you. 
Spider is one of those cards that's pretty solid, but it's not my favorite, even though it's really obviously quite good it trades with anything. But I'd rather have a Goblin Arsonist, for example, or even a Turn to Slag. Yeah, that might be obvious to many people. Clearly, double block that. It might be the right move. It's a good time to sit and stare at the board for a second. This is one of those board states where you're clearly trying to determine whether or not you want to be aggressive or not. I mean, to even consider turning to slag that deadly recluse seems kind of extreme, but it might be the right choice. Also, of course, I can just attack with both of them, or even the, the arsonist as well, and then assuming I get a trade with the uh, with one of the griffins, I can then perhaps turn to slag the centaur. course so this is another way to go about it and good or bad I'm gonna try it that's a two for one all right once again, more than likely terrible. Hmm. I guess I don't mind the amount of time this is going to buy me. 
course, I could just play this and attack, and then either you know block a courser with one of them, or try to double block the Baloth, but then taking five damage, going to three. Uh, I'll just kind of buy some time and kill this right now, or try to. Thing that tramples. <laughs> that works. And it's a bad habit I have to tap the lands first and then the spell in the hand. If you misclick it, it's, uh, it's a little worse often. It's better to click the spell in your hand first and then you know for sure you're clicking on the right, right spell. Plus, it's quicker often. Looks like a remake of Goblin Fodder, Dragon Fodder, doesn't it? Seems to be the exact same. You wonder why they don't reproduce the exact same card. I guess there's a few reasons. Pro or con. deck is a little beefy. Uh, this is one of those times you almost wouldn't mind siding in the Guardian Lions, for example. Or even taking out that for maybe the Lions. Or just to make my deck a little smoother. Exactly, but I'm sure uh, many of you see the reason why I would, good or bad. Aha, uh -huh. what do you know? Getting lucky there for sure. This will certainly be a fair trade. You could argue that you might take that, but with this in hand, especially, but yeah. Sometimes good, often good to just clear the board. Especially if you think your hand is uh, a little more surviving into the late game and you've got a little bit more time, essentially, then you're, of course, just going to want to make as many trades as possible early and buy that late game. Hmm. Bunch of options here, it seems. I like the not attacking option. Of course, now I could play the Sun Striker and the Krakos Commando. Or, of course, Griffin Protector and the Trigger next turn, which seems a little bit better. Could it even attack 
right now, but I'm just gonna simply play this. Pass the turn. Pass this turn too. It's nice to be able to F6. It's a good sign when you can uh, tap out. <laughs> Often. Sure, if there's over and in the format, and I should almost make sure. And there's not, but I won't. <laughs> um, if there was overrun, I would hold this card, of course. You know what? I'm going to be ultra careful. and a little bit of skill. 